really thrilled that they are allowing me to speak about Nick's teaching career. Some of you may remember I was here last year for the um, uh, past master's talk and I also spoke about Nick. So it's really um, lovely that I get to speak about him a second time. I remember Nick as a teaching assistant at Southern Illinois University um, in Edwardsville um, well over 30 years ago. His second teaching position was uh, at Central Michigan University in Mount Pleasant. And for, I think, well over 25 years, he had been a professor at the Tyler School of Art at, uh, at uh, uh, Temple. And he really loved that job. Nick was one of those kind of teacher teachers. Um, one of the contacts that he also had beyond the teaching at these prestigious schools and also teaching as a TA, for almost 15 years, he uh, ran a program to Scotland took a small group of students, and if many of you who are academics can imagine giving your summers up to continue to teach, this is really how dedicated he was. He would take students to, uh, to Scotland, to England, to France, to, to Belgium on these long tours, um, having studios in Scotland and constant, constantly teaching and organizing these things and putting it together. I've still heard from students that um, how much that was important to them. Um, I, some of you who may not know, I think I forgot to mention that Nick passed away about 16 months ago of pancreatic cancer. He, uh, it was a, a long sort of illness for him, but he, he always kept his good humor and, and kind of his pride. So he was the replacement at the Tyler School of Art for Rudy Staffel, and he, he was hired there. And he spent a lot of years working with Bob Winokur. I remember Nick telling me that uh, we were at an Encigo uh, quite a while ago, and Bob Winokur called him up sort of late in the evening saying he wanted to interview him for the job at Tyler, and he was going to go for a run at 7 in the morning and ask Nick to join him, and that was his interview. <clears throat> so Nick, who was not an athlete by nature, and uh, managed to get up rather early and do a running interview with a hangover with uh, Bob Winokur, and somehow he managed to get the job. Um, so and for and for the last uh, while, he's been working with uh, with Chad Curtis, who he has um, thoroughly enjoyed. It's been I, I know that's been a real pleasure for him. And of course, um, I also just want to briefly say we, we all know that uh, we've recently lost Paula Winokur, who was uh, who was Bob's wife. Um, one of the, I think, great academic teaching things that Nick has done. What you're looking at is the Crane Arts Building, and it's in Philadelphia. Nick was one of the originators of this building. It, uh, it houses studios and about six galleries. Many of his students from Tyler um, have worked in this building. They, the past students have studios there. They've done exhibitions. And it's become a, a kind of a focal point, almost a peripheral kind of academic institution from, from Tyler. And I must say, uh, it, it's really extraordinary how this building has sort of become part of the community. Um, Nick himself, uh, a renowned ceramic artist, one of the real pleasures of Nick was he was a researcher and he brought this into his teaching. He very much believed in being well-educated, knowledgeable, taking ideas, seeing how other artists have considered them, researching their history, their presence in the world, and then moving on to making art. I think that Nick has done site projects in uh, maybe 10 different countries, and he's done 22 different site projects, many of them in uh, cathedrals and synagogues and the occasional prison. He was influenced by architecture. This is a, a, a Celtic knot at a uh, church that's in St. Margaret's, which I believe uh, this, this one was in Scotland. And uh, this was a piece that was at a, a church, and I'm, my, I'm not remembering correctly, but it was at an Enseco maybe about 10 years ago. These were large terracotta forms, and that, again, were sort of part of the uh, extension of the kind of architecture.
This is the uh, renowned Glasgow School of Art in Scotland. And uh, Nick did many kind of large projects there. And we took a large group of people. Nick had um, pieces in, I think, seven or eight different uh, sites. It's a, it's a 15th century cathedral. The piece that Nick did is this one. It's another one of the pieces based on Celtic knots. This piece was made out of beeswax and, and formed the kind of Celtic knots, and it also formed the kind of entrance into the nave of, of the church. So it was there as kind of a, a passageway. This is the cathedral in New York City. This is St. John the Divine, um, a, a really beautiful structure. And Nick, uh, as the constant kind of researcher, um, found out that as this cathedral was being built in New York, they hit a natural spring as they were uh, digging the foundation, and it filled with water. Rather than move the cathedral to another site, they, they spent a lot of time draining this natural spring and sealing it and so that they could build the cathedral, cathedral uh, um, on top of it. So the piece that Nick did was this installation. It's rather high up in kind of an archway, and it's a silver leafing on this mesh of, a, of an initial water molecule. And to balance this, this kind of lovely research, it's also the passageway into the baptistry where things are, where um, people are baptized. And it has that second kind of connotation of water. Along with showing in cathedrals around the world and also synagogues, Nick, Nick also showed at the Eastern State Penitentiary in uh, Philadelphia. It's a really beautiful old Quaker building. Part of the idea with the content of this Quaker building were that the prisoners were in isolation to consider their crimes. And so this beautiful building is built on kind of a spoke wheel. So the guards would sit in the center and they would look down the long passageways. The, the prison is no longer um, functioning, and so it's been turned over for artists doing site projects. It also has this great Halloween kind of festival where people get to dress up and uh, go into it. Nick picked, Nick picked this one. It was one of the few kind of double prison cells, and you notice that the windows were on the ceiling and they were just tiny kind of slits. Nick was one of these people that would spend an immense amount of time on projects based on his research. You, you will see that the two objects that are inside of it, the, the wooden one on, I believe, your left-hand side is a reconstruction of the prison itself. Nick went to every cell in the prison, because it, it hasn't been used for, for decades, and he took moss out of each cell and brought it in, and the little slivers that you see those little um, openings on the wooden side of it are that have moss from the cell that they emulate. The one on the right is a cast cement piece. And some of you who know the larger breadth of Nick's work, and of course I'm just showing you a really tiny little version of it, um, he, he recreated the, uh, the prison in clay to that scale and then cast it in cement turned the piece upside down, and then filled it with water. So he brought that kind of life back to a prison that hadn't been used for a long time. Uh, this piece is based on, uh, it's a, another piece based on a water molecule, and it's uh, in terracotta, and it's the structure of a DNA. This piece has just been purchased by the Philadelphia uh, Museum of Art in Philadelphia, and will be on exhibit in about six months. Um, as the executor of the estate, I, I can tell you that right now Nick has four exhibitions up, and it's really lovely to see his work up. It's both lovely and, and sad that he's having four exhibitions at the same time, all of them kind of posthumously. This piece, um, about a couple of years ago, um, is a little more reminiscent of some of his later work. This piece is, is installed at the International Philadelphia Airport. So the next time you're flying through Philadelphia, you might be able to see it. It's a very long piece, and Nick started uh, basing some of his work y using sort of antique cookware. And so all of the objects that you see, the terracotta cast objects, are a variety of sort of historic cookware pieces. 
He also took this lovely picture of this abstraction of a flock of birds flying. The piece is entitled Swarm, and it is almost a kind of a journey. We all know what it's like running through an airport and having that experience, that kind of kinetic, almost time-based, physical sense of, of moving through an airport. And you get to do this with, with Nick's piece. It is a little bit of like a, a, a landscape of, of abstract uh, buildings and then this beautiful sort of flurry of these birds going, uh, or this abstraction of birds moving across it. Um, I, I, I wanted to, to also tell you that a few months ago, Nick's uh, uh, mother Dixie passed away and I've been in touch, close touch with his brother and sister, um, Doug and Tina. They were hoping they could have been here to accept the award, but unfortunately, they weren't able to be here. Um, I wish uh, I wish Bella was here to accept it. This is Nick's dog, and uh, I'm very happy to say that um, there's been a lovely kind of circular motion in Nick's life because he grew up in a small town in Lodgepole, Nebraska, where his brother still lives. I was able to send Bella to Nebraska, and so she's gone from a very sort of spoiled uh, Philadelphia dog to living in the in the wilds of Lodgepole, Nebraska. It was, it was very nice. I the last thing I would like to say is um, I, um, I I wanted to congratulate Sana again. I mean. Uh, working with her for 22 years at Hunter College, uh, uh, the, the level of integrity and dedication that she brings as a teacher um, is really extraordinary. And I want to thank all of you. It's been uh, my pleasure to be able to address you again about uh, Nick's amazing life. So thank you. Thank you.